Hey YouTube, welcome back to Tech yes, It is Brandy's coming back to you guys today with an optimization guide for gamers for Haswell. So I've been doing a lot of testing in the last three weeks and I've come to the conclusion that Haswell is very good for games. It is a good CPU, it does run hot, but that all aside, it you know, once you get it set up and you get it tweaked, it is a really damn good CPU for gaming. So let's have a look at the settings here. This is the first things I've done here, frame latency tests. So basically if you look at this graph, you probably go, what the hell is this? This is frame latency testing. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually testing all these dots here are individual frames. So when you see a big, like this one here, a big chunk out, that means that there's usually a micro stutter. And so this was like, I think the map was like loading up some text on the screen or something. So you can see that's consistent through all the frame latency testing here, but you can see that some of the frame latency testing is better than the others. And now this was just playing with a setting called the ring bus or some other motherboard manufacturers call it the encore. Uh, I think Zeus calls it the cache ratio. Whatever you call it, it's a setting and it needs to be tweaked. And so this is the first, uh, I noticed with, if you have your core clock at 4.2 gigs and you leave this on auto ring bus, this produced a decent result. As we see with the frame latency testing here, is pretty damn smooth. Um, if you, now we moved on to having the, the ring bus at the same speed as the core clock. And this actually produced the worst result. As we see here, 147 FPS versus 149.5. And not only that, the frame latency, in my opinion, was worse as well. So I recommend not clocking. If you're going to clock your core clock, don't call, uh, clock your ring bus to the same speed as your core clock. That's just my recommendation. What I did find, though, is that having it 100 megahertz below your core clock gave the best results. And I tested this uh, numerous times, and this is what the best result was, having it 100 megahertz below. And you can see here, it produced 153.1 FPS. Very good. So that's what you want to have it. Any clock you have, you want to have it desirable, 100 megahertz below. That's the best setting. Now let's move on with our, now we've got our optimized core clock and ring bus. We then move on to the memory. So I wanted to test the memory. How do memory speeds relate to gaming with Haswell? As we see here, the first set, uh, setting, we've got the auto and you know, the results are smooth. And then we move on to the XMP profiles and we, we managed to get an extra four FPS and it was, uh, we see here, the lines are actually very damn tight. So the frame latency, it's, I mean, it's debatable which is better. I personally think the XMP profiles was the smoothest. And moving on last to my optimal, this is my tweaked uh, 1866 memory clock. This is the one that I had, this is the one that I ported over from my Z77 i5-3570K. And you can see here the Haswell, I just think it doesn't like, even though the FPS is higher at 162, the Has Haswell just doesn't really like the higher memory clocks for gaming. So we see here the frame latency, in my opinion, is actually worse than the other two. So I'm going to test this a lot more in the next coming weeks. I'm going to get to the bottom of this 1866 versus 1600. But in the meantime, I'm going to suggest maybe 1600 uh, speed XMP tight timings. Or if you can get your timings even tighter, then go for that. So yeah, I found that it made, you know, for frame latency, it made the smoothest experience on XMP. Now, moving on to temperatures. How does Haswell behave? How does this beast behave in the temperature department? Now, this is the interesting thing. I tested memory speeds. It made no difference to the uh, core temperature, as expected. Um, the ring bus also, surprisingly, made no difference in temperature, regardless of what you had the ring bus set at. As you can see here, I had my core clock at 4.2 gigs. At the auto ring bus, it didn't change the temps, and when I set the ring bus to 4.2 gigs, didn't make a difference. Also at 4.1, it didn't make a difference either. The VR efficiency, interestingly enough, I turned the VR efficiency off in BIOS, and that consistently made a one or two degree difference in temps. So I'm gonna recommend if you guys are overclocking, turn off VR efficiency. So for some reason that made a one degree temp like consistently, so that's what I found with that. And now moving on to the most important part with Haswell is the voltage versus the clock speed uh, versus the clocks for temps. So as we see here, I have my 4.2 gigs at 1.12 uh, volts. This is my 4.2 gig clock for the summer. I'm going to be doing an overclock tutorial for you guys, showing you guys that, that nice clock there. And we've got the 4.2 at 1.24 volt. Now when we do the, when we up the voltage 0.12 volt, it just increases the temps a lot. So we got there 79 degrees. However, at that same voltage, we were able to manage to get 4.6. And when we got 4.6, it only increased four degrees, which is very interesting because it just says that it says that Haswell is very voltage dependent. So 
uh, just be careful with your voltages. Watch your voltages. It's the most crucial thing for heat in Taswell. I thought with Ivy Bridge, I mean, off my memory, I thought Ivy Bridge ran uh, both. Like, the higher the clock, the hotter the, the core got, but also the higher the voltage. I thought it was equal. This is definitely more slated for voltage. So, watch your voltage carefully. I probably, I wouldn't recommend going over 1.3 volt. That's just my recommendation. Uh, even 1.25 volt for a 24 stable overclock, 24 seven stable. So I'd say 1.25 volt would be that limit if you're looking for that nice 24 seven stable overclock. Obviously, if you've got like a custom water cooling kit, you've delitted, you've got liquid pro or whatever on your core, uh, and you're a real enthusiast, you're probably going to, you know, go for that 1.3 volt. But yeah, be very careful with the voltage in Haswell. So anyway, guys, that's how Haswell behaves. So this is how this beast behaves. I'm going to say in summary, uh, if we just go through that again, I'm going to recommend having your ring bus or your case ratio, whatever your motherboard manufacturer calls it, 100 megahertz below. I'm going to recommend for now the XMP profiles at 1600 uh, megahertz. I'm also going to recommend turning off VR efficiency. And I'm going to recommend keeping your voltages as low as possible. So don't um, use the auto overclocks on the motherboard manufacturers because they tend to overvolt. And this is, and it's, it's a lot more crucial on Haswell not to overvolt your CPU. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions about this uh, guide, please leave a comment in the comment section below. Or if, if it's urgent, please PM me and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech yes City. This is the place of the yes man and yes woman. So anyway, guys, I'll catch you soon with the 4.2 overclocking tutorial uh, when I get some time. I'm going to go get a coffee now. It's a Saturday and 7-Eleven. They make some awesome coffee here. Anyway, guys, peace out for now. Bye.